Hi, everyone, welcome to Style 3D channel. In this video, I'll show you the tools in the 3D window with a brief explanation. First, let's start with the floating toolbar on the left side. The first tool is Arrangement. You can also use the shortcut key A to display it. Displaying arrangement points allows you to quickly position the pattern pieces for simulation. The second tool is Skeleton. When displaying the skeleton, the garment will be in a non-selectable state. And you can only adjust the avatar skeleton. The skeleton can be adjusted by dragging to move or clicking on it. And rotating it along the coordinate axis for further adjustment. By default, skeleton movement is constrained within certain limits. For example, the hand can only rotate backward to this extent before reaching its limit. If it goes further, it would violate the principles of human motion. If you want to create movement simulations beyond the limits, you can disable the rotate angle limit. Then, we can extend the hand further backward to create exaggerated poses. Clicking on the fingers, you'll notice a small figure icon in the top right. When moving the joints of the avatar's fingers, you'll see that moving the right side also synchronously rotates the left side. Turning off this setting will allow individual adjustments without synchronization. The same applies to the knees, which can be edited simultaneously or independently. These are some key points about skeleton adjustment. On the left side, the IK window allows selecting poses in the pose adjustment. You can drag the mouse for fine-tuning pose angles and select body parts as needed to adjust poses more effectively. The next tool is Avatar Textured Surface. By default, avatar textures are enabled. If disabled, the avatar will appear white. Next is Avatar Mesh. The surface mesh appears as a light purple grid. Zooming in, you can see that the avatar's hair is surrounded by a bounding box, rather than being transparent as it appears by default. The entire mesh represents areas where collision reactions occur. So, when simulating garments, ensure they do not exceed the bounding box limits. Then, there's the measurements which can help determine desired garment lengths, among other measurements. For garments, you can configure the display of 3D garments and style lines. First, you can toggle the visibility of garments. Next, you can show internal lines, revealing their positions on the garment. You can also adjust the display of baseline, sewing lines, and sewing connections here. The style line display highlights internal lines and outlines on garments, allowing for easier recognition of overall shapes and internal line positions. You can also customize line thickness, colors, and whether to display silhouettes and lines, top stitch styles, and accessories. The style line feature makes it easier to distinguish the overall silhouette and internal line positions. Finally, the display of sewing normals and puckering normals can also be toggled. For fabric, you can configure the texture display in the 3D window. If textured 3D surface is turned off, the garment will appear gray. The 3D mesh option works similarly to the 2D pattern mesh. Each triangle is referred to as a particle. Smaller particles create smaller surfaces resulting in finer 3D simulation effects. The translucent 3D cloth option allows you to view internal pattern pieces and avatar details. The last option is cloth 3D thickness. If fabric thickness is disabled, garments will appear very thin, with the backside in dark gray. Enabling fabric thickness aligns the colors of the front and back, and garments gain visible thickness. You can further adjust fabric thickness for more pronounced effects. The color settings let you configure color displays for various garment attributes in the 3D window, including deactivate, freeze, ironing, flat, solidify, tack, etc. For example, 
Freezing a pattern piece changes its state, while strengthening another piece will reflect color changes. You can toggle these displays to focus on the garment's normal texture. Next is fitting. The fitting option allows you to set the display of effects such as body pressure analysis and garment stress analysis in the 3D window. You can observe the garment stress situation through stress analysis. Garment deformation analysis shows areas under pressure, with yellow indicating tightness and red indicating excessive tension. In addition, the values represented by these colors also support customization. The functions of fitting support for displaying latitude and longitude lengths. Click on the specific position where you want to view the fitting. And the precise fitting values in the X slash Y axis direction will be displayed at the click, which can assist in pattern adjustment. Thermal insulation analysis provides additional insights, but will not be elaborated here. The scene section includes ground, light, wind controls, grid, and props. These can also be edited in the object browser on the right. Next, let's do a simple demonstration. First, we will show and hide the ground, followed by the display and hiding of the light and wind control, and then the grid and props. Now, let's take a look at the attributes available by right-clicking in the 3D window. You can reset the 2D or 3D arrangement of all pattern pieces here. However, it's important to note that pattern pieces can only be reset when they are in an activated state. Next, you will see options for different viewpoints. There is also a custom camera here. We can rotate the 3D window to a desired angle and then add that viewpoint. You can also delete previously saved custom viewpoints. This way, no matter where the view is moved, you can quickly return to a previous viewpoint by selecting the custom camera. Next, let's look at Scene Align Center. If we want to horizontally center the clothing, we can click Garment Align Center horizontally, and the garment will align to the horizontal center of the 3D window. You can also choose to center vertically, and the garment will move to the exact center of the 3D window. Now, let's talk about axes, which are divided into three types, world coordinates, screen coordinates, and local coordinates. Typically, we use world coordinates, where the axes are referenced from the world. No matter how we move or rotate, the axes are as follows, blue for the x-axis, red for the y-axis, and green for the z-axis. If we switch to screen coordinates, and click on the pattern piece, you will notice that no matter how the 3D window is rotated or moved, the axes are now based on the screen. This allows for more freedom when rotating the view, as the current screen is used as the reference. The last coordinate type is local coordinates. When we choose a piece of clothing and rotate it, you will notice that the coordinates rotate with it. This means the coordinate system is tied to the pattern piece itself. This type of coordinate is helpful for making adjustments to local areas, such as accessories or small parts. Below is the scene environment, which is similar to the environment in the scene here. You can set the background color and edit or replace the background image. You can also display the grid, but we won't go into too much detail about that. Next, we have options to show or hide various clothing elements. Feel free to try using these yourself. That's it guys, and I hope some of the tips will help your modeling work. If you like what we do, please liking, commenting, and sharing this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in next video. Goodbye.